This is going to be a demonstration on how to go about, or at least start, to make a cane. In this case, I have a piece of sycamore that uh, I cut down probably two years ago. And uh, it's uh, all dried out, uh, cured, uh, very hard. And uh, as you can see, it has the bark, everything on it. I have measured it to height. Uh, what I've done is I have looked at the the limb coming out here, and the grain will follow around the edge of the center of the limb. Um, that is what I'm looking for for the top or the arch of the cane. I've already taken this log. I've cut it down to height. This was on there like that. I've cut it down to 36 inches, which is fairly short for a cane to start out with. Then I've taken on the table saw and I've tried to cut the parts that are going to be discarded. That part, this thin part, was to get more of a straight arch at it. As you can see, the grain of the wood is very, what they call closed grain, very solid, no knots in it, very strong. And I've taken the bandsaw and I've eliminated the part where these going to be. Uh, For the handle, which is this part right here. This piece will be like this, and once you get the basic body of the cane, then you come up with your ideas. I have a few ideas to start with, but you never know what you're going to have until you get into the cane itself and see what the grain where the cracks are. I don't know if you can see the grain right there very well. It's a beautiful strong grain. And that is the base of my cane. I'll show you more as we go this along. This is the next step. Once I have the waste marked out, I'll get the strongest part of the shaft, the straightest part of the shaft. What I'm using here is just a yardstick and a grease pencil. On the rough raw wood and stuff, grease pencils work fine. I've eliminated what I'm going to not want on there. It's always best to leave extra, so I'm going to leave the line as I cut it. For this demonstration purpose, I'm going to make something that I'm familiar with as far as type of project I've done before. I'm going to make a cobra cane. This side is flat so I can draw my perspective as far as the shape I want. This side here, this little lip where the limb would come out at this direction, will be uh, the flared head of the cobra as it's coming out. It may be kind of hard for you to visualize it, but as it goes through, I'm sure it'll make a lot more sense. The stock you see that I have narrowed down, I have it in my vise, and I'm leaving it square. It makes it much easier to uh, put in the vise and get a good grip on it as you're using your chisels and gouges and knives. When you're doing animals, both sides, or hemispheres you may call it, of the animal's body and head 
are pretty much flip-flop just like the human being is uh, one side will look strange if it's not equal to the other so what I'm going to be doing is removing this part here and then I'll be dropping this down here to match the size of the flare on the other side the arch of the head will be filed down as it needs to be to make the flow of the animals in this case the snake's body you might notice that I've removed all the fine bark sycamores don't have real thick bark and it's smooth but you have to remove all of the three layers of the bark to make sure that it doesn't interfere with your finished product it's not shaped yet I'm going to show you how I come up with the thing as far as the design from this piece that we have here As you can see, I'm getting the cobra's head fairly well shaped up. It's almost equal to the size of the thing. One thing about making something that is a realistic animal, uh, a dragon, uh, some kind of fairy, something like that, that's no problem because there's no such thing and nobody's ever seen one and if they have who cares but the cobra everybody's seen pictures of it on uh, alligator hunter or something like that so you have a basic idea of what it looks like but I don't use patterns I follow mother nature's grain of the wood and what they call artistic uh, license you can make it look any way you want to and who's to say it's wrong as you can see I'm not using my little tiny carving knife right now this is sharp and it's very handy to get in small spots but what I'm trying to do now is to get a continuation of the groove and stuff to get it lined up in order to do that I'm using a longer blade which has to be kept very sharp because this wood is hard and if it slips because you're pushing too hard you're going to get cut that's why I have a boo boo box in my shop to plug up all the leaks that I get I have lots of different knives short detail knife hook bird claw knife I have homemade knives that I've made up and I have a blind horse special carving knife that a friend of mine owns blind horse knife company made for me um, every one of them is handy at a certain point there's times where they're not
as you can see, I glide the tools across the uh, wood. I don't shove them. That's why they have to be very sharp. If you try to force something, you're going to end up in trouble. Sometimes when you get a hard wood, like this one is, uh, cherry, hickory, whatever it is you're working on, uh, you have problems with getting the shapes that you want. Sometimes you have to carve what they call a relief cut. A relief cut is a common term for a notch to, to do exactly what it says to give relief to the area you're trying to cut down to without excessive force. In this case I'm going to use what they call a back saw. This thing is as old as I am. What I'm going to do is cut a shallow line to give me a guide, number one. Number two, make it where I don't have to put so much force. Into cutting away what I don't want. and make a spine line, what I call the high part of the ridge of the back. Sometimes it's kind of like a brain teaser. It's hard to figure out which part is the body and which part is going to be cut away and be more or less the branch or the twig that the snake is crawling up. Uh, it's very easy to take your chisel and take a hunk of the snake away and then you're in trouble. Okay, now we're taking the wood rest and gently removing some of the stock between the snake's coils. this is done, it'll start to look a little more like what we are wanting to and it'll help you envision what we're doing. Now one thing about all the canes that I have made matter how fancy or decorative or whatever, I always 
make them to where they can be used safely by somebody that actually needs them. A cane isn't really something that you just carry around for decorations nowadays. Back in the 16th century, I'm sure the noblemen didn't need to carry those canes that they were always pictures with. Okay, the next step will be to start up here at the neck and start a continuous flow of the snake's body. You want it to gradually get smaller as it goes down. But first thing we have to do is initiate the upper part of the body. As you can see here, I've created what is going to be the end of the the stick or the branch that it's crawling up. I have tried to define some of the edges of the snake and the edge of the the uh, stick as it comes up and I have to start up here to come up with the initial body so I don't get it too thick. Earlier I was talking to you about the relief cuts in wood carving, woodworking, almost anything where you're taking away and you want to have a nice sharp crisp edge very necessary to make relief cuts especially using the hardwood like this but that's true with almost anything after you've made the relief cut you can take your gouge your chisel whatever tool you have and create more of a raised surface with a sharp edge this makes it stand out more and makes it easier to differentiate between the size of the twig and the edge of the body. The more towards the edge of the stem that you get, the smaller roundness of the gouge you want to use to make a sharper edge. I'm going to almost make this depart from the snake's body almost to make it look more three-dimensional. As you can see there, this kind of makes it look like it's no longer part of the wood. It kind of makes a border between the edge of the snake and the staff that is crawling up. As you see here, I have added the segmented part of his belly just to give me an idea where the stomach part will be. That stomach will be exposed down to here, but the rest of it won't be seen because the snake's stomach will be up against the stick. What I have started here is to demonstrate to you how the scales will be made on up to the head. The head, the segments are a little different. Uh, they're not raised as much as they are just bumps, which is necessary because when the hand grabs the cane, if you have the scales here, even after the shellac is put on there or the uh, lacquer, um, it will tear up these scales and um, make it look like there's scales missing or a hole in the snake's skin. see 
in a tiny little plane. This was my grandfather's, so it's probably as old or older than I am. Uh, I have found that a small plane sometimes can automatically smooth out any lumps that you have and the smaller the better in this situation so you can get to a particular spot. I can see with my eye that it's not even but with the plane it'll automatically hit the high spot. So as you can see there that looks pretty much flat. Um, like I said, you don't have to worry a lot about sanding it, but it does have to be smooth and straight. As you can see, the black spine line that I call uh, is developed all the way down to where it's going to come out with the tail. I measured it just out of curiosity. That's going to be about 35 inches long from the snout to the tip of the tail. So if anybody asks how big your snake is, you can tell them. Okay, now I've narrowed down the shaft, used my table saw. Uh, to me that gives you a little straighter line. As you see, I left the lines that I want on there. It's always important not to take too much. You can always remove it later. Right there I've got it narrowed down. This male adapter will fit onto the end of there. The reason I use this, it holds on to the grain of the wood better than just having the rubber tip on the cane. Um, it also uh, can be um, an extension. You can put it to this inside groove here which is right about where that line is. Or you can double taper it and have it come all the way to the end and even give it more support. For demonstration purposes, since I don't know how long the person that is going to get this is wanting it, I'm going to make it the longest effect. And then I can always cut it off and make it shorter if it need be. Uh, I have taken my pencil and marked inside of the line. That is where I'm going to get down to. You measure here all around the shaft so you don't get it any shorter than that mark as far as um, rounding it off and tapering it to fit into the fitting. Don't worry about rounding this off until after you have this on it because the wall of the fitting is about an eighth or three sixteenths of an inch thick and it'll add a little more depth to it so you don't want to take too much off here the object is not to have the top edge of this showing it'll be butted up against the wood that'll give it a little more strength the rubber tips will fit on the end of this snugly and uh, it can be replaced as need be. As you can see, I have the nub ready for the brass fitting. I have taken three-quarter inch 
another one of my old antiques. This is made by Buck Brothers, probably back in 1900. Has a very good steel. You don't want to make it too loose. You don't want to make it where it slides on and off easily. Uh, that's why I had the vice grips. Twist it back and forth and the brass will um, loosen up and actually heat the wood up which will uh, cause marks on there. And you can see exactly where it's out of round or where it needs to be. It doesn't have to be a real snug or an exact fit right now. I'm going to be going a little deeper with it and square it up. Right now I just need to have a point where I know the end will be coming to. shape of the finished cane but it, it is still a long way from being roughed in. By roughed in I mean the detail. As you see here I still have to bring down taper the body of the snake evenly to make it flow down to where the tail will be. Sometimes well, not sometimes, always, as you're doing this, you'll have to shape up the stem, the trunk of the tree gradually and stuff, but uh, the main thing right now is to concentrate on the spiral of the snake. The center line, the spine line, is very important that you keep that on the piece so you can track exactly where you have to be. Anything that you want to take away from the snake's body, take it away from the snake's body on the side or at the edge. Don't take it away from the center. As you go finish up, it will be evident to your eye where you have to remove parts of the center of the stem. The uh, stem is a living twig whatever and they're not perfectly straight so it's not going to be like a barber shop spiral the gouge that you're using to make your Scales should be approximately a 30 degree angle. You want to lift the fiber of the wood up a little bit, but you don't want to remove the entire piece. You just want to make more or less a mark. I'm going to uh, do this one side and uh, part of the other one maybe but I want to demonstrate to you in person there at the demonstration how this looks in person now what we do with the camera and such as that all looks fine and dandy but it always looks a little more explained 
when you actually get to do it yourself or see it done right in front of you. Still using the large gouge, about a quarter inch gouge. In this case, it's a spoon bill. I'm using that mainly to uh, be out of your way so you can see what I'm doing. But just one after another. Like I said before, the scales don't have to be perfect. Um, the body is twisting. You see this little light line here? This is the spine line. That's the center. On the center of the spine line, the scales will be a little bit bigger than they will be off to the side. In that case, use your gouge just a little bit straighter up at a 90 degree angle almost I don't know 15 I'm not a geometry expert but as you can see right here one there one there and then I'm making them one in between them the next one the edge of the gouge will go right up to it. And if you wanted to see what I have, it's pretty much a diagonal angle. It'd be straight like this. And I'm doing a diagonal angle like that. Um, it's not necessary to make the angle as you make these to me it's just a guideline to make it a little simpler okay right now I have it roughed in a lot of the detail is done on the snake you see the scales I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not uh, like I said earlier use a larger gouge to make your scales 15 degree angle put them in just make a mark don't pull it straight out don't lift up on it as you get down farther you want to make smaller scales use a smaller gouge put them closer together same thing applies you put two on top of one and then two more on top of that one and just goes on and on just like laying brick okay now I have sanded where I had painted you can see faintly the white stripes going down um, I'm not going to go all the way to the nose I'm mainly going to concentrate on the head and down the snake um, the reason I'm doing this now is before I finish up the the twig or the branch that the snake is crawling up I am going to go ahead and put the stain that way I can go ahead and remove and cut off uh, anything that gets stain smeared on it I'm using Minwax gelled stain. This color is called aged oak. Very dark. Just smooth it on. don't have to get it very very thick I kind of got carried away there on the top you 
don't want to make it solid black for the simple reason you want some of this white to show through. And go back and remove the excess. You see here I didn't sand that much of the white paint where the design of the King Cobra shows up that's going to be more white. I will actually go back and paint the highlights of the white and this is a view of the black scales highlighted on the head just another step of the a look you can see the bands there they'll be more distinctive once the once the um, varnish or slack will put on as you can see this part here is where I'm going to show the demonstration on how to make the scales As you can see, we have a cobra, or a facsimile of. I have left this part here blank to show for the uh, carving demonstration at the show. But what I have done is created the snake winding around the branch we created the branch the snake has the flow and the branch it has two coats of uh, clear wood finish semi gloss brushing lacquer and it's made by Depp. I love this stuff. It works really good. And I just wanted to show you how I do my carving.